Now, Africa has become a destination for many international travellers, and yes, the artwork produced in this continent has become somewhat of a focus internationally. But there are also major pitfalls, I think, because you have a vast continent, and essentially what you're seeing is people talk about African art, which means they're talking about about art produced over the entire continent, right from Egypt right down to southern Africa. And perhaps what has happened over the years, it's begins, there is a beginning, to, they're beginning to differentiate between what happens in East Africa or West Africa or Central Africa and perhaps North Africa. And in that sense, one can start seeing trends in terms of North Africa being predominantly Islamic is probably going to fit better into an Islamic art mold than, let's say, an African mold, and one sees it on auctions and then sales. But certainly in terms of, of Africa, the contemporary scene is very lively, and that has two aspects to it. You have artists that, that were born and grew up in Africa and have immigrated to the major sites like London or Berlin or New York or, or Paris, and they're practicing their art from them. They're sort of expatriate African artists, and they've achieved a certain prominence on the biennial and exhibition circuit worldwide. And then you slowly but surely have art markets developing in certain parts of Africa, like in Senegal you have an annual biennial, which is beginning to find some traction, and in a sense there's an art market internally beginning to develop in, in Senegal and to some degree in Nigeria. The third aspect of the African art market is the traditional African art scene, in a sense a, a scene that was established perhaps predominantly by European taste in the 1920s and 1930s as the, the idea of these, these objects which were actually in a sense reliquary objects or objects used for divination in, American, uh, in African societies they became museum pieces and eventually they were elevated to artworks, so taken out of the ethnographic collection and put on a pedestal as an artwork. And with the independence of African states, of course, what happened is a desire to, to bring those items back as symbols of national importance. And one can imagine the sort of disputes and tensions that would have resulted between a place like Nigeria or, or Benin and, and the British Museum. So there have been constant arguments about um, repatriation of culturally significant objects. So, and that's happened with, I suppose, every colony that, that's, that's been in existence and under British or French or German hegemony. But the traditional African art market is, is perhaps something that's, that's quite unique and on its own. And that requires quite specialized insight because next to that art market that has grown dramatically in the United States and the UK, in Africa there's been a huge development alongside the sort of curio trade is to make replicas of museum pieces. Well I was just saying that, that you have a, a whole production of replicas of, of established icons in museums and in that sense fraudulent or you would say fake traditional South African pieces have flooded the market and in that respect you need some real expertise to be able to determine which one is fake and which one is in fact the real thing and you need such technology and science to determine that as well. So it's become a rather precarious environment to work in if you've not got well established connections with collectors and with people and agents in Africa sourcing that work and being able to establish the authenticity and the provenance of that item to a point that you feel secure about it. Obviously there is great potential in that market and if you know what you're doing you can probably do quite well. Mm -hmm.